The question for this video is, after a week of using the new Mini, did I end up appreciating it for what it is? An ultra convenient tablet you can hold in one hand that's currently the most affordable way to experience Apple intelligence. A lot of people out there complained about the bezel size, no OLED, no ProMotion, things they wanted. Did any of that keep me from using this? And also in this video, as somebody who already relies on a MacBook Pro, iPad Pro, which you can see in the background, an iPhone Pro in the pocket, was I able to find a use for this new Mini in my setup. We're gonna talk about that. And very importantly, what about the jelly scrolling issue from the iPad mini six? Has that been fixed? We're gonna talk about it. But first, if you're new around here, I've got a productivity course called Learning to Be Productive, which will help you get more done in less time in the Apple ecosystem. And I've also got a freeform course called Freeform Unleashed, which will go way beyond the basics, teach you how to get more out of this awesome app. So let's get the jelly scrolling out of the way first. Is it fixed? Of course it is. Apple wasn't gonna let that stay around. It's fixed, I can't notice it anymore. Makes a huge difference to me as somebody who could notice it. I know with the last model, a lot of people saw this as almost a perfect device, but the jelly scrolling either made them return it or kept them from buying it in the first place. So I know that's gonna make a lot of people happy, but I do just have to start this off by saying when I took this out of the box, a big smile crept over my face. And that's because there's just something about this size that clicks instantly with your brain. Like if you're gaming or watching YouTube, you've got a screen that's bigger and more immersive than your phone, but at the same time, it's smaller and easier to hold for a long time versus a bigger tablet. It turns out this is my favorite iPad size for interacting with and using Freeform, especially in certain environments. I keep it over here on the side of my desk. I reach for it to make some notes without interrupting my flow or the rest of my setup. But I loved using Freeform so much on here. I even made a new template here with scenes so that I can jump around with these note cards, put in some images, make some notes, give it a title. And I've been getting a lot of requests for a similar template that I made, so I will add that to the Freeform course shortly. Now, this whole week, I was intrigued with the fact that Apple gave us the Apple Pencil Pro as an option now on this. And now that we have Apple Intelligence, I wanted to see how did the Pencil and Apple Intelligence change things for me. So I tried the beta preview of Apple Intelligence, and I gotta tell you, aside from things like math notes and straightening out your handwriting, which I think you're probably familiar with at this point, which are both really cool, the ability to scribble things into Siri if you don't wanna voice stuff into Siri, that's been pretty cool. I would say the upgraded Siri experience really does add something to this device. Like normal things you maybe wouldn't use an Apple Pencil for are just better with the Apple Pencil. So I can go into edit a photo in Apple's Photos app, hit clean up, which is a new feature, and I can actually be more precise with things that I'm erasing. And that's really cool, I like that. Soon, Apple's gonna have the image wand feature, which will help you generate interesting images that you can just put into things like Freeform using the Apple Pencil, of course. And let's not forget that the Apple Pencil Pro has a squeeze feature, and I can set that so that if I squeeze this, it activates a shortcut on the Mini, which is great for productivity as well. So how large of an impact does having Apple Intelligence and this Apple Pencil Pro make on the overall iPad experience here for this Mini? I would say it doesn't fundamentally change the way that this iPad works, it's still an iPad, this is still an Apple Pencil, and yet I would classify these changes as things that do make you somewhat more productive, or could if you put them to proper use. In other words, they are upgrades, I would say, just like putting a Paperlike on your iPad. I recommend it, I've used Paperlike for years. I love writing on the iPad with the Paperlike. It feels weird without the Paperlike, honestly worse without the Paperlike now that I'm used to it. The Nano Dots actually make sure that your content still looks crystal clear, looks really good, while also giving you that actual paper feel feedback from the pencil. There's a reason that I keep working with Paperlike over the years. It's because I really do like the product. And especially if you're gonna be a pencil first sort of user or you use the Apple Pencil for anything, whether it's sketching or handwriting, do yourself a favor, get that upgraded. Now, regarding whether or not this $500 device not having an OLED screen or ProMotion bothered me or kept me from using it, the short answer is no. I found out after a week of using this that I view this as a really utilitarian device for me. Back to the productivity angle, it wouldn't make a difference for the way that I'm using this if this had an OLED screen or a better refresh rate. I wouldn't email better, I wouldn't surf the web better, I wouldn't take notes differently or better. So honestly, I knew going into this that this wasn't gonna be for you know watching the latest greatest show or movie in the most immaculate possible way that I could or I wasn't gonna be using this for serious gaming, although you can play AAA games on here. So if you're a serious gamer, you're either gonna want an iPhone, but you're gonna get the smaller screen or a different iPad for that bigger screen. Either way, it's gonna be more expensive. And I think Apple had to balance those trade-offs. You know, they wanted this more budget-friendly device for people. And I think after using this for a week, I understand it. It is a great productivity device. It does slip into different parts of your life and workflows 
in a way that other iPads just don't, just because of the size. And let's be honest, if you hand this over to a kid, for instance, for gaming, they're not gonna care if it's not OLED, they're not gonna care if it's ProMotion. And as a parent, for instance, maybe a student, if you're conscious about the budget, then you're still gonna like the price point here. Very honestly though, am I happy about this Touch ID button instead of Face ID? I've got Face ID on my iPhone. I've got Face ID on my other iPads. I don't have Face ID on the MacBook Pro or this mini here. It does kind of bother me. I'm used to Face ID. I prefer Face ID. Touch ID is not bad. You can use my old trick of scanning in your palm. It's just not my favorite. And I'll just be honest here. I don't want people to think I'm just fluffing this device up, you know, unnecessarily. It does feel a bit clunky and somewhat outdated with the bezels, I'm not gonna lie. But there's always a trade-off, right? The bezels give you a little bit of a grip as well. And when you're in the moment and you're getting some work done or you're doing whatever the task is that you need to get done, you're not thinking about the bezels. You know, you're just accomplishing whatever this thing actually allows you to do. So I think the people that are making a big deal out of that, this was never gonna be the device for them. But for so many people, this is gonna slot in and help them accomplish things maybe they couldn't or wouldn't wanna do with other devices and be very satisfied. Obviously, this is a touch-friendly device. If you don't have a keyboard, don't have an Apple Pencil, it's gonna be great. And I've talked a little bit about using the Apple Pencil and that experience. I've really enjoyed that as well. But I wanna spend a little time talking about this as a voice-friendly device because I found myself using my voice to get things done on this device in really satisfying ways. Obviously, that meant doing some dictation instead of typing, because I'm never gonna be the type of person that pairs this with a keyboard, even though you could. But I wanna point out, this also makes a great voice device for interacting with an AI, if that's kind of the preferred method of AI interaction for you. I've been using this with the advanced voice mode in ChatGPT for the whole week. But then more applicable for Apple users is the new voice recording feature in Apple Notes, perhaps, which lets you automatically see a transcription of what it is that's being recorded. And that can be a great way to brainstorm or to start a note taking session, which then you can go and hash out a little bit later, which I guess is my way of coming back to something that I brought up in the past, which is, you know, it's you that's the pro, right? And it's not the device necessarily. So you can use this to accomplish some stuff in a professional way, depending on the type of work that you need to do, including using it for multi-cam recording in combination with your iPhones. I've got four iPhones that I'll sometimes hook up to this. And it's so small that it's like I can go anywhere and unpack with four iPhones and this tiny little tablet that's just big enough to be very useful you know, and like a whole studio and set up, it's amazing. So to come back and answer the question from the beginning of the video, can I appreciate this for what it is and not what others or I might wish that it was? The answer is yes. I've really been enjoying using this all week. It's been following me around the house. It's a great wind down device after a long day, big enough to wanna use for certain types of activities for hours at a time, yet small enough to use single-handedly like you see right here, also for hours at a time with no hand fatigue. So that big enough, small enough combination is a sweet spot. You can see why this thing is so popular. I can see it in my analytics. The iPad mini content has been super dominant over the years because what you're seeing right here, Apple Pencil plus one handed grip here is a killer combination, even if there's still plenty of room for improvement. Thanks for watching today. Don't forget to check out the courses. I've got a free newsletter, which you also wanna check out. That thing's ramping back up in a major way. Let me know what you think about the mini. At this point, I've made several videos about it, including what was exciting, what people are disappointed about. So I really wanna know what you think about it. Leave me some comments down below and I'll catch you in the next video. Later.